I really can't believe this is a powerful bleed bill. Yes, a bleed bill. It doesn't look like it. It's not a bleed weapon or the typical bleed armor like we're used to in Elder Ring, but man, I like how easy it is to proc bleed and the ton amount of damage it puts out, making boss fights a no brainer. I will show you all the armaments I use for this NG Plus build that can easily be played in late game as well. This is Balrox and let's not waste time. Game on. So first, let me tell you how this build works. It's a strength arcane build that takes the best from both worlds. Physical damage coming from the weapon strength scaling and increased bloodlust buildup coming from arcane. In this build, I'm dual wielding a weapon that I've never thought it was going to be this good. The combos are extremely great, satisfying and quick. Also, the long reach of this weapon is a great advantage against all enemies and bosses. You fight them at a distance to avoid damage easily. The weapon that I'm dual wielding is the Knight Rider Glaive. Each halberd will have blood affinity, so at max level it will scale B with strength and D with arcane, with a big bloodlust buildup of 100, but it reaches at 134 with the attributes that I have for this build. To get a second Knight Rider Glaive, have a friend drop one for you or just play NG+. This weapon can be infused with Ashes of War, which is a great plus because you can adjust it depending on your playstyle. But since it, I will need it to hit several times to apply bleed faster, I decided to go with the repeating thrust Ash of War on the right hand Knight Rider Glaive that will do a flurry of thrust after an initial twist. It has very low FP cost that will allow it to be used a lot of times to the point to be spammable if that's your jam. On the left hand, another Knight Rider Glaive with Royal Knight's Resolve. To add that additional slap power of 80% of damage when starting a fight or mid fight if you want to reapply it again, which I sometimes do on a boss fight. Like I mentioned before, the attacks of this build are very versatile. Starting with the dual wheel combo of one slash, one poke, then two slashes and ending with an overhead smash. Your typical strong jump attack, a charged right hand slam, your powerful repeating thrust as a war attack that will make you proud bleed most of the time, and also a double hit charged mounting attack that I love it because you send enemies flying up in the air. If you like fighting enemies while mounting torrent, you will have a blast like I did. The rest of the armaments are a keen dagger to apply the golden vow as a war and any seal to apply the buff flame grammy strength. This is how you can buff before fighting a tough enemy or a boss. I'm not using any offensive incantation on this build. This sometimes can be annoying, but not a problem with the variety and powerful weapon attacks. If you are into fashion souls and if you are using the Knight Rider Glaive, you have to use a Knight Cavalry Armor Set. Comprised of helmet, armor, gauntlet, and greaves. It's a decent set that will get you to 53 points. In order to use this armor set and the two halberds at the same time, you will need any of the arsenal talismans that will increase your maximum equip load. Now, if you don't care about the looks and want to increase your damage by 10% when bleed occurs, then you can pop in the beautiful white mask. Hell, you can use the raptor's black feather chest if you want to do more damage with the jumping attack with this build. So that brings us to the version of this build if you're not in NG Plus yet and still playing near late game. You can play with only one Knight Rider Glaive and not use the Arsenal Talisman uh, because you won't be heavy loaded. And if you have it obtained the armor set in Consecrated Field next to the Mounted of the Giant, uh, you can use whatever good armor you got in hand that will get you to 51 poise or close. Also, you won't be able to use the power stance in combos or use the Royal Knight's Resolve as a war, but you still can use and abuse the repeating thrust as of war attacks. On this build, the first talisman I'm using is the Lord of Blood Exaltation that will raise attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. Next is the Great Jar's Arsenal. Like I said before, to increase the maximum equip load to use a heavy armor with the two halberds, a dagger and a seal. You can even use the lesser talisman like the Arsenal Charm or the plus one version. Next is the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia to increase the attack power relative to the number of attacks you land. Effective 
after 3 hits. For each tier, the power increases by 6%, 8% and 13%. And last, it's a Shard of Alexander that will increase the attack power of the Repeating Thrust Ash of War skill by 15%. Sadly, it would not affect the attack power of Royal Knight's Resolve. I mainly use the Physique Flask before fighting tough enemies or bosses along with the Golden Bow Ash of War and Flame Grammy Strength Incantation. Uh, the tiers that I'm using are first the Green Burst Crystal tier that boosts the stamina recovery speed. This build eats away your stamina a lot, so having something to help you recover it, it's a plus. And the second tier is the Thorny Crack tier that will boost successive attack power and will stack with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. If you know and play Bleed Bills, uh, you know how well this works. The only contention that I use on this build is Flame Grab Strength in order to buff before a tough enemy, but most of the time against boss fights. This is the buff sequence that I use. First, I use the Physique Flask, then Golden Vow Ash of War, then Flame Grammy Strength. I take a FP Flask, and last, I two hand my left glaive to use the Royal Knight's Resolve. That only lasts 10 seconds, so you have to be quick to do the first hit. If you plan to do this build from scratch, I will say that you need a class with good amount of strength to play like a strength build at early game and mid game, then start adding points into Arcane. So I think a hero and a Vagabond will be good to use. I'm playing with the level 200 Vagabond, so the points you see here might differ from yours if you have a different class. The attribute points are distributed like this. Vigor at 60, Mine at 20, you don't need a lot of mines since the repeating thrust as a war is very cheap. Endurance at 32, strength at 80, since the Knight Rider Glaive with Blood Affinity will scale B with strength. Dexterity at 13, no points in Dexterity ever. Intelligence at 9, no points here ever. Faith at 15, to be able to use the Flame Grammy Strength. And Arcane at 50, to increase the blood buildup of the weapons. This build was the perfect example of a hybrid build. Taking a great strength build and adding bleed affinity, it became an extremely powerful bleed build. The pros being the long reach of the Knight Rider Glaive, the powerful jump attack and combos, and the great repeating thrust dash of war that makes awesome damage and fast bleed buildup. The only con that I see was the absence of any incantation to snipe enemies from afar or to chip damage to bosses. But it really wasn't a problem. So if you're looking for a great PvE build for NG+, or even late game with the modifications I mentioned, uh, you need to try this build. So guys, I have to appreciate every one of you. And if you want to support the channel, please give this video a like. Uh, that will mean a lot to me and will help the channel grow. And if you are new, please consider subscribing if you like to check out more Elden Ring content, especially when the DLC is just around the corner. I appreciate your time and comment down below if there's a crazy hybrid build that you have tried in the past or if there's one that you're still playing with. Be sure to check more bleed videos in my Elden Ring bleed build playlist that are still powerful to this day. So as always guys, be safe and see you on the next one. Ciao!